Good morning students, welcome back after your second term. Now this is your final term and I've already posted one video yesterday. That was the part of your third term. Maybe it says second term but of course you have this chapter Romeo and Juliet in your third term. So make, th uh, make sure that you go through the chapter, read it, watch the video, understand it. If you have any problems you can let me know. Apart from that, in the final term, we have few new chapters and we do have some previous chapters as well, the chapters from the previous terms. So it will be a kind of a revision for you. So make sure that you go through the revision chapters as well. And in English languages, of course, I have posted uh, two videos. Yesterday, I posted the video about your um, composition writing, essay writing. And today I've posted a video where you can go through the format of your letters once again. I'll be starting with the new chapters this week itself. Right? Okay, so let's continue with the story of Romeo and Juliet. It is again from your same book, The Stories of Shakespeare's Play. Right? And it's a nice one. We've already started it. You must have watched the videos. Right? We are on page number 36 we've done till here and I hope you remember that this play it actually took place in Verona it's a place in Italy there are two families Capulets and Montes and of course Juliet is the daughter of Lord Capulet and Romeo is the son of Montes now there's a these two families are rival families so let's start with the story let's see what happens between them I'll start from page number 36, second para. Romeo, however, did not go to his own house, for he decided to get the opinion of a trusted advisor. Now, Romeo, he fell in love with Juliet, and the moment he got to know that she belongs to Capulets, he got little worried. And what he did, he thought of going to a person who would be a neutral advisor, who would actually advise him in the same relation. So he says here, this was a priest named Friar Lawrence. The good man had risen early in the morning and was in his garden gathering flowers when Romeo came to him. Now of course that means Romeo was up throughout the night and early in the morning when uh, Friar Lawrence, he was actually you know, picking flowers from his own garden, Romeo, he came to him. From Romeo's look and early hour of his visit, the priest, who loved him as a son, knew that all was not well with him. Now this priest, he actually loved Romeo as his own son. And the moment he looked at him, he understood that there was something that was not right. He thought that, the, that his love for Rosalind might be the cause of his trouble. Even the priest was well aware of Romeo's whereabouts and the moment he saw him, he thought maybe he's troubled because of Rosalind. When Romeo told him how he had spent the night and what had passed between himself and Juliet, he at first disapproved of his change of feelings. Now the moment this priest got to know about Romeo and Juliet and their relationship, he disapproved it. He was not happy with it. He knew because of the rivalry. But he was moved by the young man's earnestness. Of course, he was moved means he had to agree the way Romeo was deeply in love with Juve. And he hoped that perhaps a marriage between the rival houses might bring about friendly, friendly relations between them. So he agreed to his request and promised to perform their marriage ceremony. Now just imagine the priest, he had the idea, he thought that maybe if these two families, you know, will come together and their children will get married, then maybe the enmity or the, you know, the problem between them will resolve and they will become friends. So somehow he agreed uh, that he would help Romeo in marrying Juliet. So when Juliet, according to her promise, sent to tell Romeo at what time 
she could be with him, she heard from him in reply that Friar Lawrence would perform this ceremony. Now, when Juliet, she sent a messenger that, okay, I'm free at this time, we can meet. In reply to that, Juliet got a response from Romeo that Friar Lawrence is ready to marry them. At that appointed hour, they met and the good priest joined their hands in marriage. Of course, uh, you know, they thought of marrying and they thought that this was the right thing to do. And that's what they did. They went and met Friar Lawrence and they got married. He prayed that it might be the means of bringing back peace between the Capulets and the Monteagues. He thought that maybe it is the right way to bring peace between these two families. The ceremony over, Juliet returned to her home and waited as patiently as she could for the coming of Romeo. Now, finally, the ceremony was over and Juliet, she was really excited. She went back home and she was waiting for Romeo to come. For he had arranged with her an hour when he would meet her in the garden and take her away. But fate was to prove cruel as we shall hear. Now, of course, Romeo and Juliet, they had another plans. They thought that they'll meet at a given time and then, of course, Romeo will take Juliet away from there. Means maybe they'll run away. But before anything could happen, there was something else waiting for them. About noon on that day, means on, the, on that same day. So just imagine, first day they met, second day they got married. And on the same day, what happened? During the afternoon, when while Romeo's two friends, Benvolio and Mercuto, okay, were walking in the streets of Verona, they were met by a party of Capulets, with Tybalt, Lord Capulet's nephew, at their head. Now, when these two friends of Romeo, they were in the street, they came across a group of Capulets and Tybalt was also there. He was the nephew of Lord Capulet. This was the same Tybalt who had recognized Romeo on the night of the feast and had wanted then and there to kill him. Now, he's the same cousin, who nephew, who really wanted to kill Romeo on that same night when he did recognize Romeo and, you know, when he was disguised and he was there in the Feast of Capulets. Now, Mercuto belonged to neither of the rival families, but as he was friendly with Romeo Amonti, Tabel came up to him and accused him of that friendship. Now, Tabel, of course, he was looking for a chance to hit Romeo. So uh, the moment he saw that Romeo's friends are there in the market, he went to one of the friends and he started accusing him that your friends with Romeo, this and that, everything negative. When Mercato gave him a sharp answer, Benvolio did his best to prevent a quarrel breaking out. Now, of course, there was another person there, another friend of Romeo, Benvolio. He really wanted this fight to end. He didn't want any kind of quarrel. So he entered into the fight and he tried to you know separate them and finish the quarrel. Tybalt was about to start a fight when just at that moment Romeo himself came that way. Now there was you know Tybalt was about to hit one of his friends when Romeo entered in. Tybalt turned upon him and called him to his face a wicked man. Now Tybalt was you know, um, short tempered. He was waiting for the moment to hit Romeo. And without a second thought, he actually called Romeo a wicked man. Romeo, as you may imagine, did not want to quarrel, least of all with one who was a cousin and friend of his dear Juliet. Now, Romeo was not at all, you know, in the mood of any quarrel or fighting. He was now married to Juliet and he didn't want it he actually was not in favor of hitting Tybalt, as he was Juliet's nephew. So he gave a soft and friendly answer. But Mercato was angry at this strange mildness in Romeo and with a rude speech offended Tybalt so much that he drew his sword. 
Now, one of his friends, he was quite surprised to see that Romeo is being nice to Tybalt and he couldn't actually bear it because of which he actually, you know, he must have used bad speech to hurt Tybalt. And in his anger, Tybalt, what he did, he drew his sword. In the fight which followed, Benvolio and Romeo did their best to prevent the spilling of blood. Now, there was the fight. However, Romeo and Benvolio, they tried to avoid fight. They made sure that there was no spilling of blood. But Tyrell struck a blow which brought Mercator wounded to the ground and then with his companions moved away. Now Tybalt what he did, he actually wounded uh, Romeo's friend, the one who was being bad towards Tybalt and then of course he moved away with his companions. Romeo soon saw that, his wound, that the wound was sure to cause Mercator's death. Now the moment Romeo saw that, okay, now he is... His friend will die and of course he lost his temper. Benvolio, with the help of citizens who had come to see to the scene of the fight, had the dying man carried to the house nearby. So Benvolio, what he did, he carried the dying man to a house nearby. But Romeo, seeing his friend thus cruelly murdered, could not control himself any longer. He turned suddenly on Tybalt and in the fight that followed, killed him. Now Romeo, he actually was ignoring, he was avoiding the fight, he was avoiding the quarrel, right? But because of his anger, he couldn't control it anymore and he could actually see his friend dying. So what he did, in turn, he actually killed Tybalt. Tybalt was Capulet's nephew and Juliet's cousin. Now let's see what happened. For a few moments, he stood overcome with wonder at what he had done. But at the urging of Benvolio, he ran away from the spot. Now Romeo was actually surprised that he killed Talbot. He never wanted to, but somehow he did. He was actually shocked at his own you know, uh, response, at his actions. He was feeling ashamed he was stood he was standing there stunned when Benvolio he forced him to run away from the scene. Benvolio wanted to save his friend before any of the gathering crowd thought to arrest him. Meanwhile someone had reported the matter to the Prince of Verona. Now there was the Prince of Verona I'm sure we, we know about Verona as a place so there was a prince Somebody reported the matter to him and of course then there was a problem. And he, together with Lord Montique and Capulet, their wives and others, was soon upon the scene. Now this Prince of Verona, he came to the scene, to the place where Tybalt was killed with Lord Capulet and Lord Montique, with their wives and with their families. The Prince at once demanded an account of the matter. The prince really wanted to know what actually happened there. Benvolio, who had watched the fight from beginning to end, told him exactly what had happened. Benvolio was there, so of course he knew everything. So he told the prince of Verona what actually happened there. He described how Romeo had not intended to fight with Tybalt and had done so only on Tybalt's killing his friend Mercator. Lady Capulet prayed for revenge on the Montiques for the death of Tybalt, her nephew, while the Lord Montique defended Romeo, who had only done justice and killing a murderer. Now, there was this argument going on. The prince was there, both the families were there, and they were actually accusing each other's uh, culprits. So Montiques, they were trying to save Romeo, and the Capulets, they were trying to blame Romeo for Tybalt's death. The prince, who wanted none to disturb the peace, settled the case by ordering Romeo to go out of the country. Now, prince, he wanted peace in his place, in his country. So what he did, he ordered Romeo to leave Verona then and there. He was unwilling to let murder in the streets of Verona go unpun unpunished. Now, prince uh, was really worried. He somehow, he liked Romeo, but he had to do justice as well. So what he did, he ordered Romeo to move out of the country. 
And apart from that, what else he did? He wanted people to know that if there's a, uh, you know, if anything as such happens, then of course it will not go unpunished. To Juliet, eagerly expecting Romeo's return to her, her nurse brought the surprising news that he had killed her cousin Tybalt. At first, Juliet could not control her anger at what Romeo had done, for she did not know how hard Romeo had tried to keep the peace. But when she heard that Romeo had been sent out of the country, her love for him overcame her anger. Now, at the, you know, Juliet was actually waiting for Romeo to come back. While she was waiting, her nurse came back with the news that Romeo had killed Tybalt. The moment she heard the news, Juliet, she got angry with Romeo. But later on, when she heard another news that Romeo is, you know, he is punished and he has been sent out of the country, suddenly her love overtook the anger and then she started crying for Romeo. She was glad that Tybalt, who otherwise would have killed her Romeo, had been killed first. Now, she somehow felt that, okay, that uh, Tybalt should, would have killed Romeo, and thank God Romeo survived and Romeo killed Tybalt. So she was okay with it. She was no more worried about her cousin, but she was actually worried about Romeo. Yet she was full of sorrow at the thought of parting from her husband. Now there was one thing that was actually troubling her. That was she had to part with Romeo. So she was crying. She was bewailing. She was very sad on thought that she will be separated from Romeo. She was not at all worried about Tybalt. So maybe her family will think that she's crying over Tybalt's death. But she is actually you know, crying because of Romeo. Her nurse, who had brought the sad news, now offered a word of comfort. She knew where Romeo was in hiding and thought that perhaps he could at least come and say goodbye to her. Now, of course, the moment her nurse saw her crying, she gave her another news that she is aware of the place where Romeo is hiding and she also feels that before Romeo leaves the country, he can say goodbye to Juliet. Romeo, running away from the scene of the fight, had come to the house of Friar Lawrence and had poured his sorrow and despair into the old man's ear. Old man's ear means he actually told him everything about what happened. Now, Friar Lawrence was the one who was supporting Romeo. He was taking care of Romeo and this is the place where Romeo was hiding. So, okay, um, somehow this news was delivered to Juliet and this is the place where they will plan and meet. We are on page number 40 now. The first line will start from here in the next video. Just do one thing, read it, okay? Just read the pages so that you know what is actually happening in the story. Right? Go through the story. I really want you all to study. And um, regarding your English language, I'll be posting the new videos soon so that you know how you have to start with your new final term. Okay, that is it for today. We are on page number 40. I'll continue from here tomorrow. And please make sure you all have your book, have your books with you and please do watch the videos and I really want you all to mark yourselves present. Please do put present under the videos. If you're not doing so, I, I'll be marking you absent. Okay, so that is it for today. Thank you.